What's going on, everybody? It is January 19th, Friday, finally. Uh, this has been a long week. I'm not really sure why. It wasn't any different than it normally is, but whew, it's been dragging. Uh, we've got, I think, seven games tonight? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It could be an interesting slate. There's some good games. Like, I'd like to watch the Raptors and Spurs. I'd even like to watch the Pistons and Wizards. I guess there aren't really good games. Nets Heat is bad. Grizzlies Kings is real bad. Nuggets the Suns is probably fun. Lakers Pacers and Jazz Knicks are bad, but whatever. Who cares? We're playing tonight. Uh, going live tonight at 6. So uh, let's just get started. First game up. Only 7 o'clock game. Toronto Raptors hosting the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, Raptors are five and a half point favorites at home, and that would be uh, the fourth highest implied total on the night. So Damar at 8,400 would need 42. Uh, let's get this last two weeks filter updated. I really wish that I can do that. Just put like is in the last two weeks, and I would never have to update this, but I don't. It's just a pain in the ass, always. You would have to think that DeMar is like a good matchup if his shot's falling against the Spurs. What has he done in the past against them? It's just like a weird game in that you know they only play twice a year. So earlier this year he had 40. He's never really gone crazy. I don't love him. I don't hate him. I would expect him to do better, but he clearly doesn't. Um, so it's just a three. Lowry, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,900 on DK. I mean, we need him to get to 40 as well. He's only been in the 30s since he's been back. I can't imagine that the Spurs make this like a better deal for him. Second most expensive point guard on the slate. Has never played well against the Spurs outside of one game four years ago. I don't really love the price. So I'm just going to walk away from Lowry. Surge is 5,300. He's worth a look, I think. You know, 26. Not a great game his last time out. Hasn't been good lately since he's been since he was out for that game for the suspension. Um, he feels like he would be such a great spur. Yeah. I mean, I guess he's a four, but just because of his price, I don't. Nothing's looking good here for the Raptors, which is weird because they have the fourth highest implied total. I would have expected at least one person to pop off the page, but I don't know. Yaka Pirtle. Man, if you think the minutes bump up a little bit, I've got him at 21. We need him to get to 20 fantasy points at 4,000. Done it. Three of his last four. Um, I don't know where value is going to be. So he might be a sneaky spot to find it. To the Spurs we go. Um, obviously no Kawhi. No, uh, no Ginobili as well. Um, still no Rudy Gay. Other than that, everybody's playing. Ooh, prices look terrible on DK. Uh, okay, this could just be this. So he's Lamarcus is 90, 9100 on FanDuel. Um, how good of an offensive rebounder is Lamarcus? Very good. Might be an interesting spot. You need him to get to 45. He's done that in four of his last six. And 
that's tricky. Um, I I don't I don't mind it. I don't like this game, but you know you would expect it to be close and be a good game. Oh, Kyle Anderson, I don't even want to see your name after that dreadful performance. 7.2 fantasy points in 22 minutes. Uh, the problem is he's 5,000 on FanDuel, and you need him to get to 25, which is a level that he's hit in four of his last seven. So, got to fire him up again. Danny Green, 4,300. Uh, the way that the Raptors limit the three ball, I'm not really interested there. Danny had a decent game. His last two have been pretty solid. I don't think that uh, that's going to continue tonight. Could be wrong. Been wrong before. You know, he might be a four. Is He's been playing well in these last two. See if he can keep a little bit of momentum going. I probably won't have him, but I would get it if you wanted him. He has been seeing a couple extra minutes. Pau Gasol, 5,700 on FanDuel. So that's 28. A monster game in his last time out. He's had three 35-point games in his last seven. How does Pau normally do against the Raptors? Really well two years ago, but two years ago he wasn't 900 years old like he is now. Oh for 6 in that game earlier this year. It's hard to do. One point. Still got the 20 points. I actually like Pow. I don't see anything else that I would want. I don't trust Murray enough. Um, minutes are just yo-yoing all over the place. That's a bad game. Those prices are terrible. Oof, let's just move on. Brooklyn we go. This one, this isn't going to be much better. So the Nets have a 102 implied total, which is 11th. And D'Angelo Russell is expected to play tonight. We don't have any word on his minutes, but you would expect it to be low 20s. That seems to be a relative standard. I don't know who that's going to pull minutes from. It's been so long since he's played. So I'm a little hesitant to... Uh, to be rostering any nets tonight outside of feel free to have Rondé Hollis Jefferson on DK. This one's just there's it's there's so much ambiguity here. Um I don't want Alan Crabb. Damari Carroll is 5,700, so that's uh, 28. He's had three of his last four have been pretty monstrous for him. Oh, too many L's in Hollis. I don't think that Damari Carroll's minutes or Rondé Hollis Jefferson's minutes should really be impacted by him coming back. So, but like Dinwiddie, Levert, you know Russell himself, Joe Harris, I can't. We need to see how the rotations change. To that Heat, Heat 105.5 implied total, which would be fifth, and that's in Brooklyn. So. Could be interesting there. Um, you know, the Heat are obviously still quite thin. These guys are all getting tons of minutes. Uh, not going to be a Wayne Ellington night for me, I don't believe. Josh Richards in 6,000. He needs 30. He's been in 30 in four of his last seven. No reason to suspect that couldn't happen tonight. Um, 
yeah, I don't, I don't really want Wayne. We need 22. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say, like, completely no. I don't like the matchup, but just so many minutes, so many shot attempts. James Johnson, 5,400 on FanDuel would be 27 fantasy points. He's had two games above 27. I wouldn't be super worried about him. Kelly Olynyk's minutes are so tricky too. If you like, it goes from 27 in one game to 18 to 28 to 16. If you know he's getting 28, I mean Kelly Olynyk's a really good play at 4300. I can't. I just want to look into the Heat a little bit more. I can't write him totally off. Whiteside 8700. So let's go to 45. Had a monster in the last time out. He's got to 45 twice. It's not bad. I don't love it, though. Not off to a great start on this slate. These first two games are dreadful. <sighs> Pistons. Uh, 103.25 implied total, which is 10th, hosting the Wizards, and the Pistons are one and a half point underdogs. I think I read that Avery Bradley is 50-50 to play. Right now we have him in. Um, basically everybody for the Pistons that could have been in is in. Bradley is 5,400 on FanDuel, which would be 27. I don't anticipate thinking this looks good. He's been at 27 one, two, three times in his last six, but I'm too nervous about that injury. Drummond, though. 10-2. He needs 50. He's put up 50 in three of his last four. All of those were almost 60. How has he done traditionally against Washington? Not good. But he also traditionally had not done well. Wait, when was that? All right, December. I also said he didn't do very well against Toronto, and he hammed on them too. I wonder what he's doing. Oh, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Drummond's been weird, man. I don't know why he's playing better. <laughs> Even though I know that he's just good. Um, well, I can't write him off in its entirety now. I sounded stupid when he went ham on the Raptors. So, I don't like the price. I don't, it's not great. Let's compare his... Okay, so my... Yeah, I'm, I'm just low on him a little bit. Which is fine. Ah, oh, man. Really and truly, just... I don't know how to manage Andre Drummond. Um... I won't have him, best I can say. Tobias Harris is 6,500. Um, I don't think I want any part of that. You would need 32. Ah, he's done it four times. I do not enjoy this slate so far. It'll all open up shortly, I hope. All the good stuff's on the back end. Ish is 6,400. That seems prohibitively high. Needs 32. 
done it twice in the last seven, one big game. The rest of them have all been sort of depressing. I can't believe his price is still 6400 I'm going to pass. Reggie Bullock, 3700 on FanDuel. I mean, he's had one, one breakout game out of all of these. Can't totally say no, just because of uh, the minutes and just because of um, that price, but I'm not super married to it. Let's go to the Wiz. Wizards are have an implied total of 104.75, which would be ninth. Need more coffee. Tonight will probably be the last live stream on the old PC. I haven't been able to uh, take the time to fully wipe the new one and um, you know get it all set up. And I don't think I'll have the time to be able to do that before we go live tonight, but I will Saturday morning. Bradley Beal, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Need him to get 240. Uh, he's had three 40 plus point games. In his last seven, does he have any weird history with the Pistons? I assume no. Nope. Okay, totally okay with Bradley Beal. Um, just a three. It's not like it's a crazy good matchup. John Wall, 10-3. We need 50. He's had a 48-point game, three 50-point games, and a 60-point game recently. Uh, I don't get the sense that Ish Smith is going to be able to stop him from doing much. Um, and defensively, like, you know, you can only put Avery Bradley on so many people. <laughs> uh, I like John Wall a lot tonight. Otto Porter, 6,200. He has been not good lately. Let's look at that chart. Just so many dud games. 0.36 fantasy points per possession. 0 0.48, 0 0.51. Dude has been uh, a little bit of a struggle. You need him to get to 30. He has not done that in the past two weeks. Uh, I'm not going to predict that today is the day that he comes out of it. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I don't expect to have him, but he's starting to become a little bit of a value, particularly on DK. I'm going to pass on Ubre. Gortat is 5,000, which would be 25. Uh, he's been bouncing up and down. There's no telling where this dude ends up on a night-to-night -night basis. But we can see how he's done against Detroit. Not awful. That's my bar. That's that's all I'm trying to do. Which one of you guys are not awful? Okay. Who knows? Keith. Uh, it rolled his ankle in the last one, right? Oh, uh, he's in play. It's all about the minutes for him. To the Grizzlies we go. Grizzlies Kings with the potential for Mark Gasol being out. They should just cancel this shit. Gasol is questionable. Um, this game is questionable <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. It's just bad. I can't even imagine... Like, I hope nothing looks good because I wouldn't want to ever watch a second of this trash. Memphis is 26th in effective field goal percentage as a team. Sacramento is 30th defensively. So it's the uh, whatever the opposite of um, the irresistible force versus the immovable object is, that's this. Tyreek, 8,800. You need 45 out of him. He's had 40-plus in four of his last five. I 
think that his price probably takes out his upside. Um, but he does feel safe. I can't see any situation. You know, revenge game. I can't see any situation where he's not taking shots. Uh, so, I guess it's just it's just bad. Uh, this game has no line since uh, Dave Yeager has said that they're going to sit multiple veterans on a given day. So. <laughs> The sports books are like, well, you know, some of those guys have a pulse, so we can't make this game too bad. Not to mention Gasol is questionable. They shouldn't just take take it off the board. Who cares? Nobody wants to bet on this. Um, Marcus Gasol is eighty eight hundred as well. There's, I can't imagine wanting to take him. Slightly dinged up. It's not like the worst. Like it'd be a good spot for him, I think. But why, why would you do it? Dylan Brooks is 4,000. Uh, no, I don't. There's no reason to look at this right now. Everything changes if Marcus All is out. And if Marcus All is in, I don't want anything else. Maybe Evans, but I doubt it. That's, that's really the only way to say it. If Marcus All is out, then you start looking at Deontay Davis and maybe Brandon Wright if he's playing or Jarrell Martin or. Um, Jermichael Green but for right now it, it's all hinging upon that you don't want anybody if Gasol plays so much red these teams are fucking terrible okay Sacramento in my eyes is going to have a 99 point implied total which would be last Willie Cauley Stein is 7200 so you'd be looking for 36 Right now I have George Hill and Zebo sitting, but your mileage may vary. 36 for Willie Cauley Stein. It's a couple 40 point games. I don't really see much of a reason that he couldn't have a good game here. I actually like Willie Cauley Stein. Goes back to my thought process for some guys where like, if Gasol doesn't play, like, Willie Colley Stein can go out there thinking, like, okay, I'm better than every single other person that they're going to throw at me. It's a reasonable stance to take. Uh, wow, Scal's got a really good price on DK. Bogdan, 62. You need 30 out of Bogdan. He's done it twice, and that's basically his ceiling, so... He's a four for me. De'Aaron Fox is 5,500. That would be 27. Um, I don't hate that idea. He's done that one, two, three times. That's not at all how you type that name. Scal. 5,400 on FanDuel. You would need 25. He's hit that number twice. But he's 4,300 on DK. On DK, you could take him otherwise. No. Now let's get into games where we actually have people that are decent at basketball. Denver Nuggets. Nuggets, 113.5 implied total. 8.5 point favorites at home against the Phoenix Suns. Uh, Nuggets will be without Jamal Murray still. So I'm anxious to see the pricing here. I haven't looked at anything yet. Okay. Gary Harris. All right, who's the best offensive rebounders on the Nuggets? Barton's good. Murray's good. Chandler's good. The whole team's good. Okay. Everybody but Gary Harris. Gary Harris would need 35. Hit it in the last one. He's had two 45-point games. Um, I, you know, he's clearly in play. Most of this team will be. 
Will Barton, 77. Wow. They jumped Will Barton's salary to 7,700 because they knew he was playing point guard. That is ridiculous. Fandle, you should be embarrassed. $900 in two days. Ugh, leave the value on the board. It's more fun that way. 6500 on DK. Fire that shit up. Will Barton, the two on DK. I mean, I need Will Barton to get close to 40. Put it up in the last one, on the nose. 38 in the game before that. I, I don't mind having him, but there's just, there's not a lot of value in that price. <sighs> Wilson Chandler, I hate you so much. I never get this dude right. Ever. He's 50... He's 5,000. He's 25. He had 23 in the last one, 22 in the game before that. But, like, he hasn't hit 25 in his last seven. But if I said, like, Wilson Chandler at 45 tonight, I'd be like, okay. I hate it. Jokic, 10,000 on FanDuel. Needs 50. Let's put up 50 in... Two of the last eight, he's had a 48-pointer and a 47-pointer in that time as well. I don't, I mean, I like him a lot. I haven't seen a ton of, I like him more than I liked Drummond or Whiteside. Well, um, from a value perspective, it would be close on Willie Cauley-Stein. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Trey Lyles' minutes are trending down. I'm going to pass there. Mason Plumlee's are, have been trending up a little bit, right? Nah, it was just the most recent game. Yeah, I'm fine with everything else there. If you want to have Mason Plumlee on DK, I, I don't begrudge you that. Suns now. Uh, TJ Warren is back. Marquise Chris still out. I wish TJ Warren were still out, but, you know, what are you going to do? Booker, 8,500, looking for 42. That seems completely reasonable. He's had 67 in the last one. He's had a 44-point game. I see no reason to not like Devin Booker a bundle here. Denver defense, not very good. Um, I like Devin Booker a lot, actually. Only concern is playing at altitude, but dude will gun it. TJ Warren, 6,700, needs, let's say, 35. Um, he's just missed too much time recently. I want to know more about how he's feeling coming up towards lock. We might not ever have any news since that game's at 9, but he's expected to play. Um, I think he looks fine there. Bender, no thank you. Right, 4,500, that would be 22... I don't trust him. Ulysses is 4,300. I normally have a pretty decent pulse on Tyler Ulysses, oddly enough. I don't hate him tonight. That's probably it. Two games left. Lakers and Pacers. No line on this right now. I've got Pacers by three in L.A. We've got no Lonzo, no KCP. Um, Kuzma is questionable. Uh, Ingram is questionable. This game could potentially get out of hand. But you would think there's some value here. And there is. Who are the good offensive rebounders on the Lakers? Uh, Lonzo, that doesn't help. Jordan Clarkson, that doesn't really help me. Nance, that's good to know. Ennis, 
Okay. So Brandon Ingram, 6,300. He would need 31 or so. If you knew he was playing, I'd probably be okay with that. Um, so, you know, be aware of that, that he's questionable. We might not have any information about that at 1030. Josh Hart, though, should get a ton of minutes with KCP and Lonzo both out. He's 4,500. He needs 22. Uh, did that basically in 26 minutes. He had 27 the game before that. Um, when he gets the time, it's not. It, he's a great option. He's a two for me. Um, Kuzma needs 30. He's been dinged up, but he can clearly get there, so it's hard to just disregard him. I would say if we don't have very definitive information on the Lakers game close to lock, I probably won't have any Ingram or Kuzma just to, you know, keep myself safe. Randall is 6,600. That's 33. Uh, he's done it three times. You would expect him to get a couple extra touches here. And I would imagine Randall thinks that he could boss on Sabonis. Now, Nance at 4,900. Need him to get to 25. He had 20 in the last one, but he had a 44-pointer, a 36-pointer, 29. Um, I like Larry Nance a lot. I hope he gets a couple extra minutes. Let's go, Luke Walton. What are you doing? I'm okay on Jordan Clarkson and Ennis. Brooke Lopez, I mean, it's just... It wouldn't shock me if he had one of those 30 points in 18 minutes type games, just because... You know, that's just how he kind of rolls. Pacers, 109.5 implied total would be second. Um, I do have this as, like, the best game to focus on. I'm hoping that when I paste this stuff in here um, and I check out the values that the Pacers just look really good because I'd, I'd prefer to just ignore the Lakers part of this. Okay. Oladipo is 9,300. I think for the first time I'm actually going to say, I think Oladipo is a good play. <laughs> he would need 46. He's done that in three of his last seven. I uh, love Oladipo tonight. I realize it's a back-to-back. -back -back, but, I mean, is that really a huge deal? How many minutes did he play last night? He played 35 minutes last night. Yeah, I'm, I'm perfectly okay with Oladipo. He should be by far the best guy in a backcourt matchup. Um, I could certainly see myself having a Booker Oladipo backcourt at shooting guard. Thad Young needed your needs 30. Uh, had a big one last night. It's the first time he's been over 30. I don't think tonight's the night that I need to get cute with that. Boyan is at 42. I'm okay there. Well, actually with Boyan, I should at least have a piece of him if possible. Not a piece of him, but at 4,200, um, if he makes something work, that's okay. Darren Collison, 5,300. So you would need 26. Sad. Uh, he's been pretty hot lately. He's been over 26 in one, two, three, four of his last six. Um, he's going to be getting a steady diet of Josh Hart and other guys that are you know, not necessarily in his league. I like it. Corey Joseph uh, finally came back down to earth a little bit last night. 7.4 after two big 25 pointers. Um, same sort of scenario here for me, though. I'd be totally okay with having some Corey Joseph. I mean, why wouldn't Corey Joseph just eviscerate the second unit of the Lakers? Maybe more specific. As much as Corey Joseph can eviscerate anybody in basketball. You know what I mean? It's not like he's uh, that kind of guy. DeMontis Sabonis is 6,000. 
He needs 30. He's done it twice in his last seven. You know, he's been steady. He's getting minutes. Um, and the Lakers are bad. So I would be remiss if I didn't even look at him. To the Jazz. The big news here, Stifle Tower has returned. Rudy Gobert is back. Which means uh, you could light all of the shares of your Derek's, Derek Favors stock on fire because uh, he is no longer playable unless they drop his salary to like 3800 So Mitchell is 8000 Here's something I want to know because Rudy Gay has missed so much time. I would like to know how much different... Yep, yeah, Did I say Rudy Gay? Rudy Gobert. I am the worst with uh, saying names correctly. Should somebody go back and watch every one of these videos and uh, put together a clip show of how bad I fuck that up all the time. I want to see how much Rudy Gobert has been impacting Donovan Mitchell. So, Rudy Gobert on the court. And Rudy Gobert off. Alright, so Mitchell has been a bit better with him off the floor. The only guy that is happy that Gobert is back from a fantasy perspective is probably Joe Ingles. Um, look at that for Derek Favors. When Favors is on the court with Rudy Gobert, he puts up 0.69 fantasy point DK points, so 0.7 on FanDuel. When Gobert is off the floor, Favors puts up 1.04. He loses 0.3. He, oh my God, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. Okay, it doesn't really affect Donovan Mitchell. It's it's not. You know, the best, but it's something to keep in mind. It's good to know. It's not Gobert. That's pretty much all the we, all the takeaway we needed. So, Donovan Mitchell against the Knicks. Um, Jazz 104.75 implied total, which is ninth. Um, totally okay with Mitchell. He needs to get to 40. I see no reason why he can't do that. Uh, it's the Knicks. He's put up 40 twice in his last five you know no no craters you know all games into the 30s um so i like that a lot joe ingles 5300 i'm gonna go ahead and pass Derek favors i couldn't pass fast enough ricky rubio 5300 so that's 26 28 in his last one yeah i'm fine with a little bit of ricky rubio if possible I doubt it, but final team, New York Knicks. Knicks 100.25 implied total, second worst on the night. I hate the Knicks. I just want them to be better, and they're just not better. I keep hearing, uh, by I keep hearing, um... Nate Duncan and Danny LaRue have been talking about a Kemba to the Knicks deal. I can't see why the Knicks would want to do that. 9400 for the Zinger. That's uh, 48 implied. It's a lot. Ever since I uh, stopped taking him, he's been putting up 40 and 50, so this seems like a perfect opportunity for him to do the opposite. How has he done against the Jazz in the past? Not good earlier this year. Not the worst. Gotta look at him. But not a lot of guys. To, everybody's just kind of jumbled together tonight. Which I don't really like. Um... I don't think Tim Hardaway at 5600. That's 28. 
I'd be okay with that. I think that's probably it. Canter back to Utah. 30. Put up 30 in the last one. Let's put up 30 in... One, two, three, four, five of his last seven. And with creative rounding, um, you can get that to six of seven. I know Gobert is back, but I'm willing to at least take a peek there. That's all we got. Um, there's not a lot of value out there right now outside of the Lakers. There's not a lot of interest for me right now. It just feels like a wholly sad <laughs> slate of Friday games, which is a shame. Friday's such a weird night, too. Let's, let's dump this in and see what pops out, because I don't have a feel for it right now. This can go in so many different directions. It's either going to be really clear to me that I can get to a lineup I like, or I'm going to have a big struggle. Let's see what we got. Okay. So, Josh Hart is uh, clearly not an issue there. I thought he was a point guard on FanDuel. Okay, that's fine. Um, so Josh Hart, and then some combo of Wall, Oladipo, Booker. So, seems like Wall is the first one that comes off there. And then we're looking at Josh Richardson, which would be fine. I can't see me going for anything else in that regard. What do we got at center? Jokic. God, it just like that's just like a morass of all of the same dudes. It seems like I would say that I would have to go Jokic. And that would thin me out pretty quickly. Lots of wall and beal. I would probably differentiate and go get off of Beal to go DeRozan. So then we'd be looking at something like that. Wall Joseph. DeRozan, Hart, Richardson, Bullock, Rondé Hollis, Jefferson, Sabonis, Jokic. Oh my god, that is just... That's dreadful. What was the optimal? Oh, they're all jumbled together. 284 to 276. That's such a tight spread. Lowry, Dragic. Beal, Hart, Warren, Richardson, Hollis, Jefferson, Sabonis, Willie Cauley-Stein. Man, we need value. Uh, as of right now, I'm. Uh, this is going to be a wild one. It's going to take a lot of digging to find find like little quirks of lineups and stuff. I don't even know where the news would come from. I don't even know that we'll get the news fast enough because we've got three games from nine o'clock on and they're probably the more important games you know raptors spurs without having like wholesale news like hey demar Derozan's out or something that's not even a game that's super interesting i don't have a feel yet at all let's check out dk What do we got? This one will look a little easier because I saw there was more like clearly delineated value. So I think Josh Hart would be a no brainer. Um, Rondé Hollis Jefferson was a two for me, so I might as well do that. John Wall as well. And we're down to three. I liked Will Barton. So it would be that lineup right off the bat. Wall, Barton, Rondé Hollis, Jefferson, Wilson Chandler, Scal, Josh Hart, TJ Warren, Donovan Mitchell. 
I like DK a lot more than I like FanDuel. That came about real quick. I'd be happy to just plug that in and be done right now. Don't do that if uh, you're listening to this. That's it. I'm done. We made it. It's Friday. Um, like I said, I'll be back live before lock starting at 6 tonight. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. You, know, you guys know the drill. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you guys tonight. Let's hope this gets a little bit better. Bye-bye.